Hello. We're going to take a look at two pianos and compare them from the point of view of several metrics that are based in the frequency domain. This is a uh, attempt to mimic the approach taken by Rich Gallicini and Hugh Sum in their piano tastings. And it's hoped that this will lead to them producing another piano tastings that uses some of these metrics. Two pianos of the Yamaha and the Kanabi Grand, both in my house, and I'm going to use them. I'm going to compare them by playing a short snippet on each one. Then I'm going to uh, look at the time domain plots with three notes, spectrograms and tone centers with three notes, and the inharmonicity ratio plot for three notes and autocorrelations. I think we'll find that the autocorrelations have the least to give in terms of gaining insight. But I'm including them for generality. And finally, I'm going to take a look at all 88 notes or keys from the point of view of the tone difference, tone center differences, the cumulative line spectrum maps, and the inharmonicity ratio. Okay, here come the, uh, the two snippets. Okay, these cuts are cuts that came from actually fairly good recordings using some good microphones and a good preamplifier, but they've had to, they've gone through my laptop, which then played them, and then they've gone through uh, Cam Studio, which is recording this. So the, the quality of these snippets is highly questionable. Right. Here is the uh, Kanabi C1, Yamaha C1. You can tell there's a, there's a tone difference. Here's the spectrogram. This is a uh, time-dependent line spectrum that uh, plots the strength of the signal versus the frequencies and also versus time. So you can see here for the Kanabi, I've got uh, a dominant component here at the one, two, three, four, five, sixth harmonic. It starts out strong and then starts to uh, fade away. You can see there are groupings here uh, of eight really. The eighth and ninth harmonic or partial are weak. Then the uh, 16th and 17th and so forth. Multiples of eight, which has to do with the fact that the strings were struck at about one-eighth of their length. The tone center is shown here with this black rectangle and it's basic, it's derived from the uh, spectral centroid. It shows where the, where the, the uh, strength of the, the harmonic strength is centered. The Kanabi has a tone center of 318 hertz the Yamaha has one at 504 hertz, a lot more power in the higher harmonics. You can also see that by looking at the spectrogram over here. The uh, strongest partials are in the second grouping of eight. And there's a lot more power in these groupings over here than there are in the Kanabi. Okay, I'm going to project those curves back onto the to the back wall and you can see something that looks a little bit like a normal spect uh, line spectrum. I'm doing this to show you how the peaks start to displace from the harmonics. For example, here's the first harmonic, second harmonic, and so forth. First of all, note that there's very little power at the first harmonic, or the second for that matter. When you get out here, Right about right here, you can start to see that the peaks are displaced relative to the harmonics. Here, for example, here. Same thing over here. 
for example, takes place right early on here. Is a displacement. This is the inharmonicity due to the uh, stiffness of the string, mostly. And you can see the Yamaha has quite a bit more. This is the ratio of the observed partial, the nth partial, divided by the first harmonic. And then n is subtracted from that ratio. If there were no inharmonicity, this nth partial would be equal to the nth harmonic. And then when it's divided by the first harmonic, that would give back n. And then n minus n would be 0. So you'd get this green curve along here. For the Kanabi, you get this blue curve. It shows that as the partials progress, you get more and more inharmonicity. And you can see that the Kanabi curve is showing even more inharmonicity than the Kanabi, which is logical because the strings for the Yamaha are much shorter and thicker. Here's the autocorrelation. Uh, the autocorrelation is a, a, a measure of the uh, pulses that come to the ear as a function of lag time. For example, the autocorrelation in the Kanabi C1 shows there's a little pulse that occurs right here at about 5 milliseconds. About 5.5 milliseconds, which corresponds to a uh, frequency of about 180 hertz. But the strongest peak the first strongest peak occurs out here at about 31 milliseconds, which corresponds to 32 hertz, which is the uh, value of the first harmonic. There's also a peak about the same place over here for the Yamaha. The uh, other little parts of the curve are quite different, showing that there's a lot of uh, activity, but weaker for pulses that have shorter lag times than over here, which is a consequence of the uh, presence of the higher harmonics in the Yamaha. Okay, there's the two C3s. Here's the spectrogram. Again, you can see there's more power in the higher partials for the Yamaha than there are for the uh, C3. Uh, for the Kanabi, tone center is 250 hertz as compared to almost 460 hertz over here for the Yamaha. Okay, let's move on. Again, we can see the onset of inharmonicity here when these blue peaks are displaced relative to the harmonics, which are the red dots. Same thing over here. The ratio shows that they're similar in terms of their inharmonicity between the two pianos. By this time we're, we're into the uh, different strings. For example, the C3 for the Kanabi is three separate strands. Uh, for the Yamaha it's two wound strings. Here's the autocorrelation, not too much insight here. They do have a first strongest peak at 130 hertz, which is about right for the first fundament for the fundamental. Here's the C5. Here you can see again that there's more power in the higher partials. Tone center is 930 hertz. Kanabi has a tone center of 634 hertz. You're also starting to see a lot of uh, power below the first partial, which is uh, probably related to the hammer knock. There's more of it on the uh, Kanabi. Again, the projection shows the onset of inharmonicity for both, about the same. And you can see that's verified by this ratio plot. Two pianos had about the same inharmonicity for C5. You know, the uh, autocorrelation doesn't really add much insight. They both have a, they both show a pitch at 525 hertz, which is about right. But uh, other than that, there's not much here. Now we'll go to all 88 notes, all 88, all 88 keys. Look at the uh, tone centers in 
red is the Yamaha, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Black is the Kanabi. You can see for these low notes, say from 1 to 30, you have the Yamaha having a higher tone center than the Kanabi. I'm implying this in cents now instead of hertz. About 30 to 60, they're fairly similar. The Kanabi may have a little bit higher tone center. And then out here for the high keys, high numbered keys, they're about the same. Here's the same thing, the difference is plotted versus keys. Down here the difference is negative, which means the, the uh, Kanabi tone center is less than the Yamaha. And then here the Yamaha is a little bit greater. Big part of me, the Kanabi is a little bit greater than the Yamaha, and they're about the same out here. Here is the uh, cumulative line spectrum for each piano. I'm plotting the accumulated power versus frequency versus keys. <coughs> so, for example, A0, which is key number one, you start to increase in frequency, and you see there's no power at the first partial here, the, first, the fundamental, there's nothing at the second, and then you start to get a contribution here at the third, and then there's some more, it adds up, it's accumulative, as you get in higher and higher partials, and about, uh, say, 2,000 hertz, you have accumulated about 100% of the power of the signal, so it's cumulative in this direction. I'm playing the first harmonic, second harmonic, and third harmonic in dotted lines here. The A indicates where the uh, wound strings, to the single wound strings, go over to uh, double wound strings. Same transition point here for the A. Uh, C is where the dampers no longer are used in the keys. And then this area up here at the very high numbers, denoted by D, shows that there's this low, below a fundamental power. It appears to be significantly more for the Yamaha than for the Kanabi. Here is this ratio plot for the inharmonic. I'm plotting the vertical axis here on the, at the same for both pianos, so you can see that down here for the uh, low key numbers, which is plotted along here, Here's a zero. It's a lot lower on the Kanabi than it is on the Yamaha. But as the key numbers increase, the pianos start to become similar. These little black dots refer to the uh, partials, where the partials occur. I'm plotting harmonic frequency here again, like on the last plot, logarithmically, so I get a straight line. Okay. That concludes the summary. I used uh, snippets from each piano to compare. Uh, the quality is quite poor, so there isn't really a good comparison there. Time domain plots to show the differences. Spectrograms in the tone centers. The inharmonicity ratio. The autocorrelations. And I did the same thing for all 88 keys. Thanks for listening and watching.